Now let's give some examples of type 2 autoimmune reactions. And again, recall that type 2 involves generating autoantibodies against molecules that are either found on the surface of cells or in the extracellular matrix. So the first uh, disorder we're going to talk about is autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Anemia refers to a deficiency in delivering oxygen to tissues in order for, and which would help tissues generate ATP. Uh, the most common reason for anemia is iron deficiency. Uh, in um, low iron individuals, um, they will not have enough iron to make a large amount of hemoglobin, and therefore their red blood cells will not be delivering oxygen to their tissues efficiently. In hemolytic anemia, uh, the individual becomes anemic because their red blood cells are being lysed. That's the lytic in hemolytic anemia. Autoimmune refers to the fact that the immune system is triggering the lysis of red blood cells. So let's see how this can happen. So red blood cells have molecules on their surface. Proteins, sugars, um, lipids. So it is uh, possible, and it occurs at some very low rate, that individuals generate antibodies that bind these molecules on the surface of red blood cells. So these would be called autoantibodies, and they would recognize autoantigens that are found on the surface of red blood cells. Um, why do these individuals generate these antibodies? Again, uh, you have to go back to VDG of recombination and um, junctional diversity, and, and so it's possible to generate an antigen binding site that would bind some molecule on the surface of red blood cells. So, in these individuals, they make IgG and IgM against these molecules, so their red blood cells become covered in antibodies. Wow. What's that going to do? Well, we know antibodies, such as IgG and IgM, recruit complements. The C1 molecule will either bind IgG or IgM, trigger the classical pathway of complement activation, and you'll get C3 fixed to the surface of the red blood cells. You will get formation of the membrane attack complex, if you cover, uh, so that's one way that cells will be lysed through via the membrane attack complex. Another way could be opsonization. If you cover an anti uh, a pathogen with IgG, we know that macrophages have FC um, gamma receptors that will facilitate um, antibody-mediated uh, phagocytosis. We also know that macrophages have complement receptors that will um, help phagocytosis anything covered in complement. So uh, when antibodies like at IgG and IgM bind the surface of red blood cells, that can trigger the classical pathway of complement as well as opsonization via the complement pathway or just antibody-mediated opsonization. On top of that, you've got formation of the membrane attack complex. So all of these will lead to a reduction in the number of red blood cells and thus, therefore, anemia. There's another type 2 reaction that would result in anemia um, that we covered in a previous video, which is generating, uh, which is more of a hypersensitivity. Individuals who generate antibodies to penicillin, which also happen to attach on the surface of red blood cells. So that is also a type 2 reaction, but we wouldn't call that an autoimmune reaction because in that case, antibodies are recognizing penicillin, which is a allergen in that case. Some individuals suffer from autoimmune neutropenia, which involves uh, antibodies binding autoantigens found on the surface of neutrophils. Um, again, why does this occur? Um, just a random chance of individuals generating an antigen binding site that binds molecules on the surface of neutrophils. These are typically IgM or IgG in type, and covering antibody, uh, putting antibodies on the surface of a cell is going to trigger uh, the classical pathway of complement activation doesn't typically trigger the membrane attack complex because member, uh, neutrophils have uh, those complement control proteins, which we covered way back in Unit 1, um, like CD59 or HRP or M MCP, which repel um, formation of the membrane attack complex. So in autoimmune neutropenia, the primary um, mechanism by which neutrophils are destroyed uh, are opsonization via macrophages binding to um, antibody or complement. Uh, 
And so in those individuals, the number of neutrophils is abnormally low, which makes them susceptible to certain bacterial infections. Um, one way to treat uh, these types of disorder is uh, involves the spleen. So these are all cells that are in the bloodstream we're talking about, red blood cells, neutrophils. Macrophages we find in the spleen, and the uh, blood, when it goes to the spleen, um, we find macrophages, B cells, T cells, and macrophages will, in the spleen, will pick up uh, anything that comes by that's covered in IgG, for example. So macrophages in the spleen are clearing IgG-covered substances. And this, in, in these individuals, the spleen, uh, splenic macrophages are clearing red blood cells or neutrophils. So in some, uh, some treatments of these types of disorders involve a splenectomy, removing the spleen removes these macrophages. It doesn't prevent the uh, antibodies from binding the cells, but it does prevent macrophages from clearing the cells from the body. Okay, so those are two examples of type 2 autoimmune disorders. Uh, let's cover one more that involves the kidney. Uh, the immune system is responsible for a quarter of all kidney failures. So the immune system attacks the kidney Immune proteins lodge in the kidney, cause inflammation in the kidney, and damage the kidney function. So we're talking, in this instance, about good pasture syndrome. So in individuals who suffer from good pasture syndrome, it is a type 2 reaction. It involves generating autoantibodies, specifically IgG type, to autoantigens. In this case, the autoantigen is a uh, extracellular membrane, I'm sorry, extracellular matrix protein uh, a type of collagen, collagen 4, which is found in the basement membrane of many tubes in your body. The tubes that we talk about most in the kidney are the nephron. If you recall from um, your freshman biology courses, the structure of the nephron and the, it's the filtration apparatus in the um, kidney, you've got blood vessels um, such as the afferent uh, blood vessel and the efferent blood vessel. Uh, responsible for transporting blood into the glomerulus, and that's where you have filtration of the blood into the Bowman's capsule. You've got filtration, and then you've got movement of the filtrate via the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, and the collecting duct. And you've got substances that move in and out of the filtrate via absorption and secretion, so you've got blood vessels wrapped around the kidney tubules. So that's the filtration apparatus in the kidney. Um, Underlying all these tubules and tubes and blood vessels, you've got matrix and this protein, collagen 4, uh, highly abundant in the matrix uh, between these tubes. So individuals who generate antibodies that bind these proteins, these antibodies tend to lodge in the space between the tubule, kidney tubule, and the blood vessels. There they're lodging in the extracellular matrix. This is going to be bad because what this is going to trigger is a number of different immune responses. We know that IgG covering a pathogen triggers complement activation. And so you're getting complement activation here when you've got the clustering of IgG molecules in the basement membrane. When you activate complement via the classical pathway, you're going to produce anaphylotoxins, C3A and C5A, which are going to induce inflammation. Um, we're going to recruit uh, white blood cells to the site. And so recruitment of white blood cells, activation of complement, you get a lot of inflammation here. And the repeated inflammation in these tubules results in cells dying, cells um, put, being put back, uh, more cells dying, more cells dividing, and you eventually have scarring that takes place such that the filtration apparatus, the ability to move um, substances to and from the filtrate uh, becomes uh, damaged. So processing of um, the blood, filtering of the blood, becomes impaired in individuals who have good pasture syndrome. Uh, treatment for this type of autoimmune disorder um, can really involve two different things. One is immunosuppression. If we suppress the production of these autoantibodies, we can reduce these inflammatory um, mediators, or sometimes we can filter the antibodies out of the bloodstream, and that's something known as plasma exchange. So individuals 
It's almost like a type of dialysis where they have their blood run through a machine which removes antibodies. Not great for the immune system, either one of these, but if your immune system is attacking your body, uh, these are two acceptable uh, types of treatments. So both good pasture syndrome and um, this autoimmune uh, neutropenia or hemolytic anemia, all of these are type two reactions.